What is up you guys, how's it going? Cheeky little collab for you guys today. Today we thought we'd um, talk about myths and superstitions like old wives tales, things that like, um, for example, like back in England or the West, if you break a mirror, people say, ooh, seven years bad luck. Um, we thought we'd take a crack at having a look at Chinese ones or having a look at how many of them we actually knew to see who was the most familiar with it. Now there's four people in this collaboration or links down in the description below. Um, have a look, it's kind of fun. Um, apologies for, for my part of it. I recorded it with a webcam, this one right behind me here. Uh, it's a little bit soft, not the same as the camera I'm shooting on now. Anyway, have a look, see what you think. Let's dive straight in. Boom. Myths, superstitions, and old wives tales. Why is it hard to buy a green hat in China? That one's pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy. Um, now I actually know this one. Um, no idea why. I mean, I, I'm not a hat wearing person myself, so I can't say I've shopped around. Wearing a green hat in China sounds like cheating partner in Chinese. The, the saying is, if your wife gives you a green hat, it means she's cheating on you. So to avoid that kind of, um, yeah. Supposedly it's because uh, a green hat not a blue hat. Green hat means that uh, your wife has cheated on you. And also in the ancient times, prostitutes tend to wear green hats showing that they're open for service. Nobody buys green hats, nobody gives green hats, nobody would wear a green hat in public. Let's see, what's the answer? In Chinese, green hat sounds like cheating partner. In ancient times, prostitutes wore green hats. Probably shouldn't walk around wearing a green hat then. That's uh, not the kind of image I want to give off. <laughs> I guess that was easier to know who to, uh, you know, pay to get your freak on with then, right? You know, look for the green hat. Ah, yeah, she's got a green hat. You like, psh, oh, psh. sorry, ma'am. I just assumed you had a green hat. Why wouldn't you give a clock as a present in China? I think that's something to do with, um, it's like saying, it's something to do with shortening someone's life or wishing them bad luck, wishing maybe an early grave. So if someone was on their deathbed, you'd be saying like, you have no time left. Here, let me give you time. Or saying like, you have no time. Either your time is up, or the relationship we have together, the time of that is up. Uh, this may be a Hong Kong thing, but like in Hong Kong and Cantonese, clock means uh, you're waiting to die, or it kind of sounds something like that. So giving a clock to someone means that you're waiting for them to die, or something like that or their business to fail and not a good idea to give someone a clock as a gift because essentially it's like telling them they're about to die congratulations buddy here's a clock your time's up can i have my inheritance now dad why are beards bad in china <laughs> probably because i can't grow one well nah <laughs> um <laughs> um no idea like none I don't know, maybe it means that you're like an outdoor worker and you've been you know, you know, working on the farm. In China, having a beard may mean that you live a shabby and unclean lifestyle. It may also represent some bad luck. <laughs> come on, come on, get with the times, guys. He's a pirate if he has a beard. I've actually been told many times to share my beard, but I try my best to keep it trimmed, not like those neck beards you see in like memes. Facial hair in Asia in general, a lot of people don't grow. I'll also tell you, I don't think many Chinese can grow a beard anyway. It's like a full lumberjack beard. So they may be a little bit jealous. That's just my opinion. I'm gonna disagree, because I think if you have a stylish beard, you look distinguished. A note for you pirates out there, you can have an eye patch, but no beard. Can you stick chopsticks straight down in a rice bowl? Well, I guess you could, but totally inconsiderate. You can see like incense are typically like two or three sticks that they kind of give their prayers and wishes to those that have passed away. Yeah, it's like saying, you know, oh, your Uncle Bob died. <laughs> it's so insensitive. You don't want to be insulting the dead. You don't want to be insulting a family. You don't want to be rude to them. You don't want to give them that. So, uh, yeah, totally offensive. Don't do it! True story, I actually know someone that got hit in the face that did this uh, because the other person had had someone recently die. So, yeah, you can upset people a lot and they take a lot of offense to it. It's insensitive, 
It's like incense sensitive. Uh -huh. uh, bad luck and could be seen as offensive. Although when I've asked my wife and her family and many of the Chinese people, they've been like, yeah, I don't really care. It's not really something that's that common for people actually to believe, I guess. Maybe the older generation. Hmm? What do you know about moving into a new house and the beds in said house? Well, actually, I have quite a lot of knowledge on this because I bought a house here a few years back, three or four years back, um, and when we moved in, you couldn't make the bed until we moved in. Don't know. No idea. Uh, let me take a guess. Uh, the bed's in a new house. Um, it means there's ghosts that have been sleeping there. Buy a new bed because the old one has stains. I actually don't know this one. Um, I know there's a lot of feng shui involved, which is pretty much their uh, superstition or beliefs about where furniture should be placed in a house. Uh, fertility, yes. It has something to do with your ability to have a baby. And then when we moved in, we a special time designated by like this, I don't know what you call them, like a fortune teller, somebody who knows the traditional calendar, the traditional lunar calendar, and they had to take all our details of myself and my wife, and then they give you a date and a time. So on that date is when you move in, and on that specific time is when you make, you get someone to make the bed. And usually it's someone that's respected in the family. Um, I know it's kind of similar to when you get married here, and we had like a lucky person that was from my wife's family make the bed. Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough, if it stops weird ghost, uh, ghost stains. Why should you step over a door sill and not on it when entering a home? Uh, maybe because the foundation of the house, uh, somehow you'll upset the foundation or something. Um... I have no idea about this, but I'm guessing it's something to do with ghosts because if you see a lot of the temples and ancient traditional Chinese buildings, they have like a little step. And I think that's something to do with keeping the ghosts or the bad spirits out. So if you actually watch a lot of Asian horror movies, demons or zombies, for that case, they do this weird jumping thing and that's because they're actually tied up when they're buried. Must have bouncer. So if you have a door sill, then zombies and all that can't cleanly step over it. If you don't step over it, you may have to consider it to be like, in fact, not infected, but possessed by like a demon or a spirit. Another useful bit of information, in the past, a door sill was also to stop people from concealing weapons. So when they stepped over it, you could see the weapon in their robe. So extra point for you there. Is a turtle a good pet in China? What do you think, buddy? Are you a good pet in China? I had a turtle for like a few years. Nobody said it was a bad idea, so I'm just gonna say yes, it's fine. I guess turtles are pretty cool. My wife and I have a little pet turtle on the second floor that we feed every every once in a while and needs to be fed. And we haven't had so much bad luck happen to us or anything like that, but it maybe it might be representing some bad luck. I don't know. I'm gonna say no because he has like a, a hard shell that kind of keeps everybody out and so you're not letting people into your life and it's like a, a metaphor. Oh yeah, that'd be a simile. Anyway, to, to keep people out of your area, kind of like uh, isolate yourself. In China, keeping a turtle as a pet will ruin the homeowner's business and good fortune. Wow. Well, kind of f***ed that up, didn't I? A pet is a big responsibility. Don't give someone a turtle. Full stop. What is a bad way to face a house? I'm trying to think what way my house is facing. <laughs> a bad way to face a house would be like this. Or, or. I don't know, as you drop out of a plane without a parachute. Um, maybe, maybe it's all they don't like the West. I don't know. Or, <laughs> or. Ah! Those would be terrible ways to face a house. When I mean your house, it's like your balcony or anything like that facing. Like, what's a, what's a bad direction? From the north. It's, I don't know. They like south. Everywhere I love south because it's like, you know, dark since the sun, I guess. I'm pretty sure my apartment faces north. Do I have bad luck? So if you ever want to purchase real estate, especially with a Chinese person, which I've done in, in Miami with my wife, she made it really clear she doesn't want the house facing north. Um, this may be considered bad luck, and she says the best facing direction is south. Everybody loves south facing. Even if you buy a house in England, a oh, south facing garden. It's something that would get in more sun, more part of the day. But anyways, I think facing north is like the worst direction amongst the, the four directions for your house to be facing.
Is white a good color to wear? I hope so. <laughs> I hope it's a good color to wear. I like wearing white. A lot of uh, things, I mean, I'm wearing white socks, white shirt, white headband. I'm uh, pretty white, especially during this lockdown period. Now this is to do with death as well. A lot of things are to do with white, uh, like white is to do with death, which is also weird because everybody in China loves having a white coat. I'm gonna say yes, because I'm wearing one. Um, yes, because that's the color a priest will wear. Yeah, forgive me, Father, it has been uh, 11 days since I released my last video. Look, people wear white all the time here. I'm not saying it's not allowed, but if you wear all white, it's pretty much signifying that you're going to like a funeral to pay your respects to want someone that's passed away. Oh, wait a minute, that was color. <laughs> I read that it's color. You Brits and your colors are putting U's in things. Similar to like if you're wearing all black in a funeral in the United States, it simply means that you're in a state of mourning. So it's not that people don't wear white here, but if you're wearing all white, you may get some looks every now and then if you're not going to a funeral. So, should I be stripping down? Should I take this off? When shouldn't you cut your nails? Um, probably when riding a roller coaster would be a bad time to cut your nails. Maybe uh, after New Year. I have no idea. Uh, you should not cut your nails before a uh, wedding. My wife actually called me out on this one before, but at night, because they think if you cut your nails, you may have higher chances of getting possessed or visited by spirits. It's kind of like inviting ghosts into your house by cutting your nails at night. Oops. And a little bonus point for you here too. Don't let someone see where you dispose of your nails, like flush them down the toilet or hide them in the garbage secretly, because people can so they say superstitious wise people can take your nails to a shaman and that shaman can use that to put a curse on you or put bad spirits upon you too i don't know it's never happened to me i might be possessed right now who knows but i have definitely cut my nails at night before so if you're going to cut your nails don't do it at night and do it behind a door sill which numbers do you know represent any kind of superstitions well that's kind of interesting because four is terribly bad luck because it sounds like death. So, it sounds like death. So if you use number four, it's saying that hey, you're wishing death upon a family or any other person that using the number four. Four is not good. I've also seen elevators in China that don't have the fourth floor, so they do consider it bad luck. I've heard the number two is good because you're getting like two of something. It's like double up, bonus. Two, two, two eyes. I see. Uh, eight and nine are great because they are especially eight every of the number eight because that is it means fortune and um, wealth if you have your license plate with eight, eight, eight or you must be like the richest person in china i know eight is good and in western culture you see like the lucky sevens in china it's like lucky eights like lucky eights casino and lucky eights slot machine then also six 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 is also considered a lucky number i don't know why but i know that if you have six 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 unlike in the west which is the complete opposite, it is considered a lucky number. It's a number of the beast. That's not a lucky number. Triple six. Like, triple six is the devil. <laughs> what can hot water do? Fix absolutely everything. You got cancer, hot water. You, you broke a bone, hot water. Um, gum infection, hot water, hot water. Fix everything, come on. Forget everything you know about common day medicine. Forget, forget that. It cures a common cold, it makes you get pregnant, it makes you get unpregnant, it makes you wish you were pregnant, it makes the guy's pregnant, it makes your cat pregnant. Are you pregnant? He's not pregnant. You will get looks if you always ask for cold water. Sometimes if you go to Western restaurants, they will give you cold water just because you're a foreigner. I'd always ask for it as course. True story, I actually got told by someone that uh, hot water would cure my type 1 diabetes and it was going to fix my pancreas. Which may be true, may not be true. I'm not a doctor, I haven't researched in this. Come on guys, that's like China 101. Hot water pretty much does everything. Hot water can pilot a plane. Hot water can uh, make my son quiet. Hot water can cure cancer and cure all kinds of sicknesses. They say as a joke, like the real Chinese people don't actually think this, but they do like drinking hot liquids for part of their daily lifestyle. Have you learned anything new? 
kind of. Yeah, a few. I've learned that uh, I shouldn't go buy that green hat that I've had my eyes on. I don't know. I don't know the reason why, but that's what I think is the reason. There are many ways to keep Chinese zombies at bay. I wonder if it's too late for me to go get one of those shaman to go put the bed in my new house. Don't leave Chinese zombies into your house. Not a good thing. Bad at parties. So there you go. What do you reckon? Uh, for me, I watching it back, it made me laugh a lot. So uh, fair play to the editing on that one. Uh, hit me up in the comments down below how well you think we did. Who do you think was the best? Who do you think uh, was the funniest? Um, yeah, hit me up. Anyway, until next time, guys. Bye-bye.